Hey guys, welcome to my review of Gundam Build Divers Re-Rise, episodes 1 and 2. As always, I'm your host of Frozen Stratos, and uh, I watched this episode yesterday. You can check out the Watch Along uh, on this channel, where you can submit your comments or questions in that episode, and I'll respond to it here. Didn't get any today, so uh, we're diving in right into the review, and I... I found this, at the very least, a bit, like, far more enjoyable than I did Gundam Build Divers. Um, and, I mean, our main character, um, I, I don't quite remember his name, but he felt a bit ho-hum, very generic, very stoic main character, but I feel like... The show doesn't quite talk down to you the same way that Build Divers did. Um, and just slowly went through the story and and explained beat for beat what was happening because you couldn't pick up on any subtleties or anything yourself. Um, it was very much more aimed at kids. And I feel like this this is still aimed at kids, but I guess more of a teenage audience, perhaps. Um I also wasn't quite a fan of, like, the, I guess, the sort of tropiness of his, uh, his motivation. Uh, we find out that, at the very least, like, oh, hey, there's a mysterious white-haired girl within the game who knows how to speak to Gunpla. Uh, and now, I dropped Gundam Build Divers, uh, the first series, so I don't quite know if this has any relation to the, the girl from that one. But um, the fact that, I don't know, it, it seems like a Gundam thing to sort of bring in the white-haired girl in order to, I don't know, man, like uh, as a symbol of innocence or something and, and purity. Uh, and it's very cut and dry. This doesn't really go against the grain of any sort of... Gundam series, and I, I feel like going into the, you know, a build series, it doesn't really, it doesn't really want to, it doesn't really want to, like, do anything to shake up the formula, it just wants to do the formula, and at least do it in a way that's, at the very least, entertaining, and I feel like it's at least hitting that, that bottom of the barrel mark, which, I mean, it sounds, I, I don't know that it's, great. I don't know that this is a great show. I don't know if it's, I don't, or I personally don't think it's fantastic. I don't think it's the best, but it's like serviceable and like the main character isn't, I don't know. He, he hit like the audience that he's trying to hit like that, that Sunrise and Bandai are trying to hit with that character, um, resonate a little bit more with me um, as opposed to build divers, and I, I keep using build divers as a metric, but, um, you know, coming off of that one, I was just severely disappointed, because after, you know, before that, I had come off of try and build fighters, so, um, I don't know, it, it's not really, again, it's not really return to form in any sort of way, it doesn't really hit the same highs that, uh, build fighters any of the build fighters did um the fights didn't you know swell up and and explode into a crescendo like those did but i did appreciate the sort of setup the motley crew that they brought together um and just them figuring out the game i i mean like personally you know uh i play very few video games, but one of them that I do play, you know, they release an update or they release a patch and it's always fun to discover and find out new things about the game and, and, and playing it. Um, and I feel like this sort of clues in keys into that, um, where, you know, there are, there are so many things hidden within this massive game. And if they're the first ones to find it, like it, it gives it an, a sense of exploration while still having that video game setting, that very structured video game setting. Um, and again, the only really tropey thing that they sort of threw in there uh, that really nagged at me was the um, the white-haired girl uh, and how that was all presented. And also, um, having having the, the structure of the show 
be based off of the story progression of uh, certain levels and stuff. I thought that was fantastic. I thought that was a great idea, and we get to explore um, really a different setting uh, that we don't see, you know, in, in Gundam universes, really. It's more, you know, it's more hard sci-fi and very, like, gritty stuff uh, and war, but here we, I feel like we'll be allowed to jump around tonally. Um, so I've talked a lot about the main character. I also kind of want to talk about the, um, the, the friend, um, uh, what is it? The childhood friend. She's nice. She, she's fine. And she seems like, you know, the character that's going to pick up the, the mobile suit that is either the, the petite guy or the, the Kapuru Capo, the capo, the one that turned into the penguin the last time, um, the the bear guy, any one of those, um, and she might have her own, I, which you know, again, that's fine. Um, I get it from a marketing standpoint. Each of them hit like a different sort of marketing ploy. Like uh, the night dude, obviously, he's going for like the really cool stuff, um, which I really like the aesthetic of his mobile suit. That one's really cool. Uh, and it's supposed to be, and you know, the juxtaposition between having the really cool mobile suit and being a complete idiot is, you know, it, it's, it's baseline enjoyable. It's like an easy setup to an easy joke that, that, you know, is still satisfying. Um, and then, you know, you've got the, the stoic mysterious girl, uh, who's got that jacked up looking mobile suit. And I mean, like, I'm sure it has, you know it's Gundam counterpart. I just have no idea what it is. I'm not as knowledgeable in sort of the, the UC stuff. I, I lean more toward the double O's and the, the, the iron blooded orphans. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, and she's been fine so far. I don't quite know what her deal is yet, but you know, we, we've only had two episodes, so I think that's fine. Um, I, I you know, I thought the shy, quiet kid was going to get annoying, but I I really liked seeing him at least try to grow and try to make friends and the fact that they got into a group and he has to pull his own weight. I feel like there's there's story there that he, you know, gets to to live up to at least what he wants to be, you know, become someone he wants to be. Uh, and be better than who he was before and become more confident, like come into his own. I really like that. Um, and obviously he's the SD Gundam user, um, which I'm assuming is eventually going to turn into a regular size mobile suit. I think I might have seen a, a Gundam model kit listing of that somewhere, but well, whatever. I don't, I don't remember. Um, our main character's mobile suit though. Uh, I, I really dig the modular aspect of it and how it's like, uh, planet based, like just everything about that system. Uh, I love, I mean, I, <laughs> the tiny mobile suit is pretty cute. Um, I think it's pretty funny and I, I don't, I don't know that it will, will wear off on me, uh, for a little bit, but, um, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see, uh, where that's going, especially since like, uh, Bandai itself has made pushes for, for 30 minutes mission, which is a Gundam like line, uh, that only takes about 30 minutes to build and has so many like customization hard points. And like, they've been pushing that since the build series have been like going, like since they've started. And I feel like even since, uh, Gundam age, they've, they've tried to make like a really, a more robust system, or at least each time they've they've tried to make a system to where it's easier for you to customize and build your Gundam. Um, and in that aspect, uh, I think, you know, our main character's mobile suit really keys into uh, what I like about customization and robots. It's just that, um, I don't know, there, there's something something that I don't know I need from it like there's something missing there that's like it's got me on the edge of almost getting into into that mobile suit and buying it and you know taking taking the leap again into gunpla but um that's i guess neither here nor there 
and you know, I I will say, uh, just overall, they're fine. These two episodes were fine. Um, it's not really if you like Gundam and specifically if you like Gunpla and the the uh the hobby itself if you have at least a baseline appreciation for it or just hobbies in general uh i feel like uh at least down the line um you'll have something i like i saw that they they put um the uh what is it the the air i forgot the name like the 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 airbrush uh, with the Gundam marker attachment into the, the series itself. And that's something personally that I've been eyeing just because I used to use Gundam markers, but I know they're not great anymore. So don't, don't get at me with that. But, um, yeah, I, I saw that. I thought that was neat. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know. Just if you're, if you're a fan of that, if you're a fan of modeling, I feel like, you know, it wasn't really represented here in these two episodes. It was more about the fighting. But I feel like later on, you get into the building, the Gundam uh, customization and stuff. Um, and I gotta say, uh, as nerdy as it is, and I said it in the watch long, as nerdy as it is, having a pouch specifically for your Gunpla, it's, it's super nerdy, but <laughs> I kind of want one. Um, and also... Uh, it's it's neat that you know someone who who seems to want to distance themselves from from whatever is going on you know our main character is very stoic and doesn't want to be anywhere you know he's not really interested in in Gundam or whatever right now it just doesn't seem like it but on the inside like we can see that that's not technically the case like he he harbors this appreciation for it or at least a, a a a fondness to it that he keeps his mobile suit around and that might have also come from the girl you know the white haired girl that told him that uh his mobile suit uh was very appreciative that uh he was built the way he was so i feel like maybe he just sort of has an appreciation for his kits and stuff in general and he takes very good care of his things um you know i it's for me it's really just like the setting that they're in you know since it's online it doesn't destroy your gun plan you don't have to rebuild it so i feel like we get less of the modeling aspect and more of a video game aspect to it uh if you're more interested in that then i feel like you know that's that that might just go in with that expectation as well as like if you liked maybe some concepts from build divers and you were kind of turned off by the talk down nature of the way they told their story this is a good alternative um though it does seem like there were events in that story that do come into play here so you might need to catch up i didn't watch it you know like i said i dropped it so um i'm i'm probably gonna have to go back and actually watch all the way through uh i i hope it's not too long or too bad or if it does pick up uh at some point anyway uh oh yeah the opening and the ending um gotta say i was a little disappointing because a lot of the build shows have really really high tempo um and energizing uh was it theme songs uh the openings but um yeah it it uh it was it was a little more i don't want to say somber but it didn't like energize me for the episode really it's it's the visuals and i think it also sort of relates to our main characters in a way like build fighters build fighters try and to an extent build divers had that high tempo fast paced sort of music uh because the at least uh i guess our main characters were a bit more like punchy a bit more more active and and wanted to do things and you know this guy he seems a bit more docile and you know, it's very reflective uh, of our main character. So I think in that way it's fitting. I just, you know, I would rather have for a build 
uh, a build sort of uh, Gundam series that it it was a bit more high impact, a lot of action. Um, the ending, it it was slow. It took it slow. Um, very emotional. I did like it. I did like the symbolism of her trying to find basically her childhood and the the sort of connection he she had with her friend and you know returning to the Gundam base or at least a place where Gundam is is a big thing um pretty much brought her back to those times and I feel like that's kind of like what the show's doing they went back to the Gundam base uh and he's sort of now in her eyes at least he's reclaiming his love for Gundam which maybe um I guess he had such a, a such a like strong relationship to before and has somehow lost she wants to help him reclaim it and let him be happier um oh also the dad is not uh dead or missing in this like he's actually just around he's just a really not good writer that is doing his best uh so i really like the new family dynamic at the very least because we dads just don't exist in gundam build shows anymore apparently except for now uh yeah uh those i think were all of my thoughts so if you like this episode hit that like button and subscribe if you want to hear more from us each week tell me in the comments down below what you thought about these two episodes and then also uh next week i'll be doing a watch long of however many episodes come out uh i don't know if they're gonna release two again this might have been just like a special thing so um tentatively tentatively next week is just gonna be episode three so leave your comments on that episode there so we can talk about it in the next review anyways guys thanks for watching keep it juicy <sighs> oh i'm tired i just got off of rr the streets and i decided to record this because i i almost definitely almost forgot to do this and i have to wake up early so we having fun